made up of two different components. The first is plasma, which consists of 55% of blood. 91% of the plasma is water. 7% is protein. And 2% is our nutrients. The second part of the blood is the solid part. 45% is considered solid. The buffy coat consists of the white blood cells and the platelets, while the red blood cells make up the remainder of the solid component. This image shows what 10 milliliters of your blood would look like if we put it through a centrifuge, where about 5.5 milliliters would be the plasma, a very small amount would be this buffy coat, with the rest being the red blood cells. The blood serum is the yellowish liquid left over after blood clots. This is important because it contains the antibodies. Antibodies are the protein that destroys or inactivates a specific antigen. Antigens are the proteins that exist on the surface of blood cells. These stimulate the body to produce antibodies against it. You'll see that in a second when we talk about each blood type. As you can see here, the A blood type has A antigens. It produces anti-B antibodies. The B has B antigens, creates anti-A antibodies. AB blood has no antibodies, but it has each antigen, an A and a B. And then type O blood has no antigens on it and creates both anti-A and anti-B antibodies. Agglutination is the clumping together of red blood cells by action of the antibody. This is what happens when the wrong blood type is given to a person. If you go to the link at NobelPrize.org, you can play the blood typing game and see what happens. It also is a good way to try to understand how to use antibodies and anti-serum to blood type. This whole process is called serology. This is the study of antigen-antibody reactions, which we are going to be doing in class. Through the study of serology, we've determined that the universal donor is O negative. That means anyone can get O negative blood. The universal receiver is AB positive. The positive and negative refer to the D antigen. If you have this antigen, you are positive. If you don't, you are negative. In this figure, you can see that each blood type can receive from certain people and can donate to others, and in most cases they are not the same. Now the forensic scientist, or the criminalist, has three questions to answer. First, is the stain blood? If it's so, what species did it come from? And if is that means if is it human or animal? If it's human, can it be associated with a particular individual? class evidence, which means you associate with a group of people and not individuals. The detection of blood is done through two different tests, the Castlemeyer color test and luminol. Castle-Myers uses phenolphthalein test. You can see this on TV when you watch CSI or any of the other crime shows. If the stain tests positive for blood, it shows pink on the swab. Even if the blood has been cleaned up, there is still enough brown to cause the stain to show up when the lights are turned off. You cannot see it in white light, 
and it only stays around for about 30 seconds to a minute so you have to work quickly and take your photographs to document the blood stain. Precipitin test is used to determine if the blood is human or of animal in origin. Precipitin is an antibody that reacts with its corresponding antigen to form a precipitate. In the next week, we'll be talking about the heredity of blood types, forensic characterization of semen, and blood spatter analysis.